Liz, um, Liz is an amazing dancer. And um, with the exception of Miriam, dance is not a traditional Jewish medium. How do you tie dance and Judaism together? And how can creativity in new and old art forms benefit the Jewish people? Well, it, it is a good thing we have uh, Miriam because uh, people ref reference her and her dance all the time. <laughs> but think about it, what we had just survived and what did we do with our bodies when we got to the other side? But I don't think it's the only time dance is mentioned. I mean, there's that dance around the golden calf. <clears throat> so David, David dances. David dances. Uh, Jacob, um, he, he wrestles that angel. And then what does he do the next day? He bows seven times before his brother. It must have been very painful given what he had done the night before. So anyway, I think there are lots and lots <laughs> and lots of references to movement. And one, one of the things I like to say, uh, I like to think about is um, we could call ourselves the people of the body as opposed to people of the book. I mean, we could. That would be a joke. Um, <laughs> I, I'd rather call us people of the joke. <laughs> All right. but, but I think, um, you know, it's hard, for, it's, it's hard for us to disassociate all of what we've come to believe about our bodies in Judaism because it's so much of what we're thinking is thinking in the contemporary American framework. And that contemporary American framework, we did. We moved the centers of our bodies out. I mean, it's just amazing if you spend any time in a synagogue where maybe people will clap. Maybe. But when I went to my grandfather's shul, I mean, there was, I, there was so much movement accompanying so much individual passion going on. It was, it was amazing. For myself, though, what I've come to see is, um, is the following. Some of the things that I love is that I, I think creativity is our capacity to see what has always been around us, but just see it in a flash. Or maybe set the conditions so we can see things we never saw before. And Jew, you know, Jewish history is full of this, not the least of which is Midrash. What a brilliant Brilliant. Besides the, uh, besides the Constitution, I don't know where else we have it so embedded historically. Uh, too bad it was mostly just men, but that has completely changed just in the last 75 years. Um, so an amazing creative burst of energy in our community because of that change. But that you could talk to people over time, just like Beethoven just did talk to Joshua. But you, you could talk, you could use this text and talk over time between ourselves understanding our current place in this moment and then sent, set it against this historical one. I can't think of almost anything that's as creative as that, and I, and I love that. For myself, though, when I think about sparks of creativity in Jewish life, I have to say that one of them is the pushback against orthodoxy. That when, in my case, it wasn't Jewish orthodoxy, it was classical ballet, but the pushback causes almost as many sparks as what you're talking about when you bring unlikely things together. That, that remaking over and over and over again for every generation is incredibly creative, at least for me. Um, yeah. The second part of that question, I don't want to forget it, though. How can creativity in new and old art forms benefit the Jewish people? And I know we talked about this once. And... Um, I don't know about benefiting the Jewish people. It always sounds funny to me, the Jewish people. But um, okay, just but, benefit at the world. <laughs> but but I, I I think is that it good for the Jews again? <laughs> <laughs> when when um, I, I'm teaching at Harvard this semester, and Harvard does not shut down for the high holidays. It's interesting, and uh, so I had to, I had my class on uh, Rosh Hashanah, and I debated about what to do about that. And I decided to hold the class, and that we would hold the class and make it be about ritual. The class is on collaboration and partnership and all the ways that we need to be able to be good partners and good collaborators into the future. So I decided to tell them, I had only, I had only three Jew Jewish uh, kids in the class, and two of them were not there. And the several of students took the Jewish holiday, even though they're not Jewish. <laughs> just <laughs> highly creative, I thought. Yeah, I'm just going to say, I, I, yeah, they, that's true. So I told them the story of Tashlik in about four sentences. That is the idea that we would have gone to the river and then there are these various versions of throwing our sins into the water. And again, my grandfather used to do that. He'd go to the Milwaukee River and he would um, t 
take the lint out of his pocket. And, you know, my, my mother was just, I can't believe he's doing that. Just, you know. <laughs> and now here we have re completely revived that idea. So I told that story to the students. And then I said to them, now go, you have to go make some rituals right now based on the story. Make it ours. So they had 15, 20 minutes to go make these rituals, and then we participated in all these new things. That, I think, is fantastic. And, and the fact that they knew they, again, were drawing on, it wasn't even their history, but drawing on that history and making something new from it. And I think um, we see that. Uh, my friend Jim Ross, who's a, a conductor, Joshua, who is very much involved these days in trying to see if he can get audiences to clap in between movements in between movements, as an example of reviving. I'm trying to get them to clap after as yes. well. <laughs> <laughs> because who said that we, it's not tradition, it's not tradition not to clap, it's a convention absolutely, not absolutely. to clap. And it's only written the last 75 years. Maybe it has something to do with the, the women, I don't, I don't know, but um, <laughs> it's really, uh, I mean, a hundred years ago, the clapping between movements, you're right, it was, it was customary and you'd, it would sound silly at the end of Tchaikovsky Violin Concerto mm -hmm. to, to, to have no clapping and now people turn around and hush. And, so I like your friend, I think it's... it's, it's I, yeah, so I, I love making this distinction between conventions and tradition, mm -hmm. reviving these glorious traditions that we have mm -hmm. and then seeing where we can go. Thank you.